Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. In today's video, I am super excited to share with you all my updated Pat McGrath Mothership Rankings. So this is one of my favorite videos to film every year because I know many of you subscribe to me specifically because you like Pat McGrath content. And Pat McGrath remains my favorite makeup brand, even though I have talked about some of my disappointment with how her brand has been trending in recent years. I still have to say her motherships especially are the top of the line when it comes to eyeshadows for me. And so in today's video, I'll be running through and ranking all 11 of her current motherships. She probably will be coming out with a new one soon, but I wanted to film this before then since this ranking is really after I've had a thorough amount of time to truly test out all of these palettes and do a lot of looks for them. In the run up to this year's video in particular, I did go through recently and do a new look with each of these palettes. So I'll show you guys some pictures of those looks. And for today's look, this is a full face of Pat McGrath. And for the eyeshadow, I used one or more shadows from each of the palettes. So I'll also talk through that today. So if you're interested in learning about my current ranking of my Pat McGrath motherships, then just stick around. So as much as I love all of my Pat McGrath motherships and would recommend all of them, there has to be one that is last and this year it is Decadence. So Mothership 4 has actually always been ranked last in my rankings. Apologies to those of you who really love this palette. It is a really unique palette in that it is all metallic shades in this sort of gemstone color story. So it's quite different from any of her other palettes. Typically her palettes have a mixture of mattes, shimmers, and special shades. And so this doesn't have any of that. It's just the shimmery metallic shades. That said, this is a really gorgeous palette if you're someone who just likes one and dones. So recently I did a couple looks with this palette. One was just using this shade as a one and done and I was actually really surprised how much I enjoyed that. For context, usually I do like doing much more intricate eyeshadow looks as today's look might imply, but I actually found just putting this all over the lids with some eyeliner created a really lovely, surprisingly multi-dimensional look. And I think it actually goes really well with current trends nowadays, which is for a much lighter eyeshadow look. So if that's what you're into, I would recommend this palette still. The quality is impeccable. There's really nothing to complain about there. I also do like that it's quite a varied color story. You have cool tones, warm tones, darker shades, lighter shades. So there is versatility here. And these blues in particular are really lovely. So I did another look where I used these blues plus this taupey shade and this more silvery shade. So you can get a wide variety of looks even though this just has one type of formulation. For today's look, I went in first with this shade in the inner thirds. I did cover it up with another shade later, but it sort of provided the base. And then I went in with this shade both on the outer third of the lower lash line and on the upper lid. And the good thing I would say about this kind of formulation is you can use it on the lids sort of to provide some glimmer, but you can also use it sort of like a matte, which is how I used this shade over here more as a deepening shade for today's look. And I should have mentioned this at the top, but I'm doing this ranking in reverse order. So the number one ranked palette will be at the very end. Next up, we have a Sublime, which is Mothership 2. So for those of you who have been watching my rankings videos, this is not a surprise since this palette always gets ranked pretty low. But I feel like for the general audience, if you haven't seen any of my videos, that might come as a surprise since I think this was one of the most popular palettes that she had. So when she released her first three palettes, this is the one that really sold out the fastest. And if you look at the color story, it looks like it should be very appealing, right? It's a color story that has a lot of versatility. It has these sorts of everyday, sort of more neutrally, slightly warm leaning tones that are just very pretty and approachable for pretty much everyone. And then you have a variety in terms of the directions you can take with these special shades. But if you block out the special shades, you can see that this is a very basic palette with quite approachable colors. So for me, I would recommend this for someone who is really into this color story and isn't as comfortable playing around with less natural makeup looks. That said, for me, I would say I haven't really had any look from this palette that really wowed me. It's a perfectly 
nice palette. There's really no complaints overall. I did a couple looks in the run-up to today's video. So I did one that was sort of very peachy, orangey inspired. So I used this shade and this shade predominantly and this one in the crease area. It's a lovely look, but it's one that I honestly feel like I could have traded with a lot of the other palettes as well. I also did a more colorful kind of spring inspired look where I used a bunch of these shades and this one as liner and that was also a pretty look and I've used this shade as liner several times in that it's the most eye-catching shade when you look at this palette. But at the same time, there's nothing in those looks that I feel like really speaks to me so it's more maybe a personal preference thing. And then finally, this shade over here, this golden shade, even though it's really beautiful, is a lot flakier and chunkier than Pat McGrath's other special shades. And since this is a shade that comes up a lot, like this kind of color, I do just prefer its formulation and other palettes where it's a lot easier to use. This one I prefer to use with mixing liquid. If you use it with mixing liquid, you can have a really beautiful gilded look, but on its own, it's pretty flaky, so it can sort of give you a lot of fallout. And the last reason I would say this palette is falling where it is, is just, I feel like the matte combination here is not the best. So whenever I use this palette, I generally find myself just using this matte shade. I feel like the black is a little bit too harsh in combination with these other colors. It's nice for liner, but not necessarily the best if you're trying to use it more as a deepening shade. And I forgot to mention for today's look, I also used this shade on top of my eyeliner just to really set it and blacken it more. This shade though is in all of the first three Mothership palettes. Next we have Moonlit Seduction Mothership 10. So this is where my rankings start really diverging from previous years. So this was much newer in my collection the last time I filmed this video and I ranked it much more highly. Since then, I've done a variety of looks with this palette, but I feel like there's really just one look that I love from this palette. So I'll show a picture of that look, but that one is basically using this matte plus this one to deepen and then this all over the lid. And I love that look. It's really gorgeous. This shade in particular is super special. It's a really nice dual chromatic shade that just provides so much shine and dimension to the lid and I think it works really well with these two mattes. It also works well with this one as well. But for a different look that I tried, I was trying to go a bit more warm tone, so I went in with this shade, and this shade, and this shade. And that look, I have to say, was kind of disappointing to me because it just didn't pull as warm as I had hoped. And in general, I felt like the colors just didn't really cohere as well in that look. Still a really pretty look, but just not one that I would want to repeat very often. And so on the whole, I feel like whenever I reach for this palette, there's really just one primary look I go for, and other looks I've done are just okay. They don't really inspire me that much. And I think part of the issue is when I look at this palette, I really think of something quite smoky, especially with this deepening shade juxtaposed with these shades. And these two shades also are not that different from each other on the lids. They do look different in pan, but on the lids, they surprisingly translate very similarly. So as a result, I feel like the setup whenever I use this palette is the same in terms of the mattes. And then most of the shimmers kind of pull similarly on the lids with the exception of this guy. And so that's why I say that that one is the really standout shade for me. And everything else just kind of is not as inspiring with this palette. And then finally, these shades over here are not in her baked formula. For those of you who have followed Pat McGrath for a while, you know she used to always have four baked shades here, and then she switched over to more of this pressed formula, which is really nice. There's nothing wrong with it per se, but it's just less luxurious, a little bit more similar to what you can get from indie brands, and so it kind of doesn't differentiate Pat McGrath as much. So on the whole, a nice palette, but just one that I don't feel very inspired by. For today's look, I didn't actually use this that much. I just took a tiny bit of this and scattered it on the lids, kind of in between the first two shades. So I'm sorry you probably won't be able to see that very clearly. But on the whole, this color for Troy just didn't really match with the vibe I was going for for today's look. Next, we have Sunlit Seduction Mothership 11, the latest Mothership. So for those of you who watched my channel when this first came out, you know that I had a lot of feelings about this palette. I actually filmed several videos, including a couple that were just kind of ranting about the direction that Pat McGrath had taken. 
I was very, very disappointed when this palette came out because it just felt like Pat McGrath was truly digging into just releasing the same color stories over and over again. And for context, I do love this kind of color story. I love sunset, sunrise inspired palettes, but it's just a color story we've seen from her so many times. And the formulas in this palette are not any better and in certain cases are worse than some of the other formulas. So I'll talk later on about Mothership 8, which is my favorite sunset inspired palette from her. For this one though, this shade over here does not work very well. It's very flaky. At best, it's sort of like a topper on the lids, but for this kind of shade, it's not really the color you would normally associate with something you want to just scatter over your lids. It's quite dark and doesn't really capture the light, and so I'm not a huge fan of this one. These three shades were all right, but again, not in her baked formula. And the shades over here just feel like ones that are extremely redundant to the rest of Pat McGrath. If anything, they're even pinker than a lot of her other palettes. And so I would say if you don't have any Pat McGrath palettes and you really love pinky sunsetty looks, this is a pretty good palette. Like I said, I prefer another palette, Mothership 8, for this type of color story. Now, in terms of the looks I got from this palette, they are really pretty. I am not going to say that you can't get really gorgeous looks from this. And again, I think if you are a new Pat McGrath collector, this is probably less disappointing to you. But to me, it just doesn't really stand out. I don't really think to use it very much. And when I think about this kind of color story, there's just other Pat McGrath palettes I go for more often. For today's look from this palette, I went in with this shade over here and just kind of scattered it on top of everything. So you won't be able to see it very clearly on its own necessarily, but I wanted to just kind of tie together a little bit the three very divergent shades we have on my lids. So I just scattered some of this across. Moving right along, we have Bronze Seduction Mothership 5. So this is really the mothership that put Pat McGrath on the map and made her much more of a mainstream brand. And for me, it kind of has been a love-hate relationship with this palette. It's actually the first one that I bought. So when I first started getting into luxury makeup, I watched a ton of different videos about reviews of Pat McGrath palettes. And this one kept coming up as recommended. And so I picked it up really really struggled to use it. I was more of a makeup noob at the time. I didn't have the makeup brush collection either that I have nowadays and I just found this palette really really difficult to use so I actually returned it and for a while thought that Pat McGrath motherships just weren't for me. Now of course that has all changed and I'll talk later about the palette that changed that but as a result this kind of has given me mixed feelings for a while. So nowadays I can definitely make this palette work. I've gotten a lot of really beautiful looks out of this palette, but I would still say of all of her motherships, this one has the most difficult to use formulas. And in particular, it's these formulas over here, which is kind of surprising because typically this is the side of the palette, the Blitz Astral shades that most people find more intimidating. But at least in my experience, these are super, super easy to use. Love these. But these three mattes are just less blendable than her other mattes. Usually with Pat McGrath mattes, what's really nice is they build up, sheer out. They're really beautiful, buttery mattes, really easy to use, very nice pigmentation. These have great pigmentation, but they have a tendency to stick more, and so they're just harder to blend out. In addition to that, this shade over here is always hard panned. I've bought this palette twice, and it's always like impossible to get pigmentation out of this after the first couple uses. I don't know why that is. I've never had that issue with any other Pat McGrath metallic. It's not like this is any special formula either, but for some reason, it's just really, really hard to pick up. And so for me, that's what's been disappointing historically about this palette. That said, it does rank above a bunch of other palettes just because I do love this color story and especially these Blitz Astral shades are just amazing. This is one of my favorite quads of Pat McGrath shadows, period. I kind of wish she just sold this as a quad. If so, I would highly, highly recommend picking up that. 
Basically, this shade is super fun. It has kind of a green to gold to orangey shift to it. This one also has a lovely shift. This is one of the most beautiful high shine shades I've tried from Pat McGrath. I have this in the inner thirds of my eye today, so above that more basic metallic from Decadence, just to sort of amp it up. This red shade, even though it's a shade I don't go in that often with, is gorgeous if you do want a red look. So the look I did recently with this palette did feature this very prominently, and I just love how smooth this is and how this is a really true red. So if you're going for that look, it is absolutely gorgeous. And in addition to that, once you are used to working with these sorts of shades, like you have the technique down, they do create a really lovely golden sort of neutral bronzy look, which is just super, super flattering. She does also sell most of these shades in a smaller pack. So I have a video showcasing that kind of look in case you guys are interested. But on the whole, really lovely versatile palette with awesome Blitz Astral shades, but not something I would recommend if you're a makeup beginner. Next, we have Mothership One Subliminal. So this was the palette that actually made me fall in love with Pat McGrath Motherships. So after I returned Bronze Seduction, there was a period of time, and then I decided to give Pat McGrath another shot. Picked this up, absolutely fell in love with this. So I was kind of surprised, because if anything, this color story is a lot more intimidating to me, at least when I was a makeup beginner, in comparison to Bronze Seduction. But the formulations in this palette are just so, so easy to use. It really makes you feel like a makeup artist, even if you are a beginner, because you can achieve really beautiful, multi-dimensional, very special looks with minimal effort. And so that's what I love so much about this palette. It really changed my relationship with makeup and made me feel like I could achieve much more intricate looks. The look I did recently with this palette really focused on this shade and this shade since they match the dress I was wearing. But in general, I find that these mattes are just so, so easy to use. The fact that you have these three with different depths is especially great since this shade is basically the lightest matte that you can get from a Pat McGrath Mothership and it just sets up any look super easily. So for today's look, actually, I first went in with this just to sort of set my primer and make it really easy for the other mattes to blend on top. You probably can't see that shade anymore because I layered a bunch of others on top, but it did just add a little bit of cool topiness to the overall look and like I said, just made everything blend out more easily. I also went in with a bit of this shade in the outer thirds, so I sort of mixed it with the blue from Decadence to achieve the blue that you guys see on my outer thirds. But I just love how these shades all work super, super easily, super beautifully. Even this black shade, if you are a beginner, you might be a little bit intimidated by, but it actually works super easily, blends out super nicely, doesn't look patchy at all, which is, again, very impressive if you are not good at blending eyeshadow yet. And then these shades over here are just so much fun. So the ones over here are very silky smooth, applied to the skin very beautifully. And these just add some nice dimension. This one's especially fun because even though it looks white in the pan, it actually has a blue shift to it, which just makes any look more interesting. I feel like blue is a color that normally you associate with more advanced makeup users, but this palette just makes it super, super easy. Next, we have Midnight Sun Mothership 6. So if you like earthy tones, this is definitely the mothership for you. So when I first picked this up, I actually thought it was kind of ugly because normally I'm not someone, I guess, who gravitates to this sort of color story but it's just grown on me so much over time. And now I absolutely love this palette. As you can see, it ranked above a lot of other palettes. And by the way, I feel like starting with Subliminal, they're really palettes that I have absolutely no complaints about. It's just a matter of how I'm feeling that day. And for this palette, I did a really lovely look that was kind of inspired by the Met Gala theme this year, which was Gardens of Time. And when I thought garden, I immediately thought of this palette. And it's just so much fun to create a variety of different looks. You can go in so many different directions with this palette because you have all these colors. 
It's sort of like a very desaturated rainbow palette. So whatever color you want to base a look around, you can find here in a way that's very approachable. So to go more into specifics, I really love these mattes. So this one is kind of similar to my skin tone, just a little bit more amped up in terms of the ochre undertones. And then this one, even though it looks really dark, is actually one of the most easy to apply deepening shades from Pat McGrath. It applies much lighter than it looks in pan, so you can gradually build it up. And this one over here is great if you want anything that has a bit more warmth. I often go into this shade just to add a tiny bit of warmth to any look that I feel like is getting too cool. And then I absolutely love these three guys over here. So for today's look, I have this shade in the inner third of my lower lash line. It's such a gorgeous blue to purpley shade. So it really covers the gamut if you want anything that's kind of night sky inspired or ocean inspired. This one is beautifully earthy. It has a little bit of a golden oliviness to it as well. So it's a very nice, relatively neutral way to introduce green. And this one's just really fun. So this is more of a flaky topper shade. And normally I wouldn't think to top a look with copper since it's a little bit more of a all over the lid shade typically for me. But I find it so fun to pair this with the other shades in this palette. So in that Met Gala look, I went in with this, but then used a little bit of this on top. And it just adds this super interesting dimension to the look. Because normally you don't think about having green and then specks of orangey copper on top. But trust me, it's really beautiful. From a distance, it almost makes it look a little bit more just bronzy. But close up, it's just such a fascinating combination and something I would never think of doing but for the fact that Pat McGrath curated this palette so I find this one super inspiring and this shade over here is just a glitter topper without any pigment so this goes well with anything so on the whole I find that I am always able to create really fun looks with this and I frequently think of new ways to put things together with this palette so it's just very inspiring to me and something that I didn't think I would like but ended up loving more and more over time. Next we have Mothership 3 Subversive. So this is also a palette that grew on me a lot over time. When I first saw this palette, I didn't think I would like it and it actually took me a little while to pick up this palette as a result. It looks very dark and also very grungy, which are not typically things that I think about for my own makeup aesthetic, but I have so much fun with this palette. So the latest look that I did with it is one of the looks I keep revisiting because I just love how it looks so much. So I used these mattes and then I went in with this shade over here which is just such a beautiful shade. Kind of like the one in subliminal it has that sort of violet to bluish shift to it so it can work with a wide variety of looks. I've also really really loved all the looks I've done with this shade. It has almost more of a golden quality than the green in Midnight Sun but super super beautiful and high shine. With this palette you're definitely going to get a smoky look but unlike Moonlit Seduction there's so many different types of smoky looks you can get with this so for me that's what's really exciting about this and even though like when I look at the entire color story it doesn't quite appeal to me. Every single look I've done with this palette is just such a home run. Those looks are the ones that I really associate with what makes Pat McGrath special. And especially if we look at how she's been going in recent years, I feel like this is the type of palette she would never release nowadays, but that I just love so, so much. And I really hope she goes back to this type of style in the future, because I feel like there's a lot of different types of color stories you could do that have this sort of diversity to them. But would highly, highly recommend this palette if you want one palette that really screams Pat McGrath that other brands are definitely not gonna give you, including Pat McGrath today, then it would be this palette so would highly highly recommend this. So starting the top three palettes we have Mothership 7 Divine Rose 1. So these top three have been very consistent favorites of mine. I do feel very strongly about them. I always feel a little bit bad going from the other palettes to these because I know these are a bit more basic. There is part of me that's still into slightly more basic looks. They are the ones that I go to more often. 
But what I love about this palette so much is even though the color story is extremely approachable and a bit on the basic side, there's just so many different textures and special effects in this palette that make it super special, such that the looks I get from this palette are looks that I really can't get from eyeshadows from any other brand. And so for today's look, for example, I went in with this shade on the brow bone. And I don't know if you guys will be able to see, but it gives this very beautiful kind of iridescent pink cast to the look, which is very unique. I don't have any other eyeshadows in my collection that give this sort of effect. It's sort of very smooth on the skin, does not look sparkly at all, but just looks really pink once the light hits it, which I find to just be so, so pretty. In addition, you have this lovely dual chrome, which I put all over the lids in a previous look that I did featuring this whole palette. And then this shade is the same one that we saw in Midnight Sun that is sort of a glittery topper without any pigment in it. So it just adds this beautiful diamond sparkly effect to any look. And in terms of the other shades, I absolutely love these two mattes in combination with each other. This one in particular is actually really unique. So I can't find another shade quite like this. And I think it's just so perfect for a very sophisticated purple look that isn't very in your face purple, but gives you those gorgeous cool tone vibes. This one kind of warms things up and deepens things a bit. And then this shade all over the lids is super, super beautiful as well. In general, I would say if you want a really elegant look, then this is the Pat McGrath palette I would recommend the most. Every time I use this, I feel like it's super romantic, super elegant, very sophisticated. There's nothing that's too in your face, but at the same time, it really stands out in a very gorgeous way. And in general, other than this shade, none of the other shades are very flaky in this palette. And so especially if you have mature lids, then this palette plus subliminal are the two that I would recommend the most because they're not gonna give you as much texture on the lids. But on the whole, I love this palette so much. I just find it amazingly unique even though it's so approachable and the special effects that you get with these shades just add something special that's very uniquely Pat McGrath. In second place, we have Divine Rose 2 Mothership 8. So yes, this palette has finally been unseated as my number one Pat McGrath palette. If you watched my previous rankings, this one was number one for quite a while. And indeed, this was actually the palette that I used for my wedding. So this will always have a really special place in my heart. This is still one of my all time favorites, as you guys can see with the second place, but we will talk about first place very shortly. So in terms of what I love about this palette, this is the sunset palette of my dreams. So to me, Sunlit Seduction is sort of just a worse version of this palette, which is why it's ranked pretty low, even though it has very similar vibes to this. And what I love about this palette so much is that it has a lot of different directions that you can go into. So with these two shades, you can do very different matte setups. So if you go in with this one, for example, it's a very hot pink look. This one's more of a peachy sort of spring summer look. And this is just a gorgeous deepening shade that adds some interest. So it's more interesting than putting on sort of a brown or black as a deepening shade. These two are gorgeous metallics. They look really beautiful on the lids. The shades are also just very flattering in my experience. And when you put these all together, you get something that is still quite eye-catching, but is not actually that colorful. So I think it's a nice combination. For me, it's sort of the perfect in-between where you can get something that you can use in a wide variety of occasions, but still looks special and still looks fun and interesting. And these shades over here are just really great as well. So this one is her first trio chrome shade. It shifts from green to chartreuse to pink. Sorry if it's a little hard to see in the camera, but it has a really nice shift to it. It's a very smooth formula. All of these are in the baked formulation. This is one of my favorite toppers. It goes well with pretty much any look. It's sort of a pinky gold, flip topper and so you can use this basically with any look just to add a little bit more interest it's more subtle than the ones that are just clear but it's more natural than the ones that are blue for example 
And then these two are just really fun accent shades to add a bit of warmth to any look with this palette. For today's look, I just used this shade in the inner corner. It's a very beautiful, very standard skin show shade. In the look that I did recently, I put this all over the lids, which is one of my favorite ways to use this palette, and then topped it with this shade over here. And I just find it really reliable, very easy to use as well. All of the shades in this palette work impeccably well. And these two are also really nice as blushes. So on the whole, I love this palette. It's always a treat for me when I go back and use it. So if you are interested in sunset color stories, I would highly recommend going for this palette. So here we are with the number one ranked palette of 2024 by me, which is Utopian Dream Mothership 9. So I was actually really surprised that this ended up in number one as well. So when this first came out, I was initially kind of disappointed because it looked very similar to the previous two Divine Rose palettes. But as I've played around with this over the past few years, I have fallen in love with this palette more and more. Basically, I would say this is the palette you want to go for if you want a really fun Pat McGrath palette. If you want something that just sparks joy, that makes you feel like makeup is just like playing around, then this is the perfect palette for that. Especially if you like kind of girly, almost Sailor Moon inspired looks. Side note, I realized that this is sort of the higher end dupe of the Sailor Moon ColourPop palette. It's basically the same color story, but of course with really lovely formulations. So if you like that kind of vibe, then this palette might be for you. For me, I just think it's so much fun to go in, especially with these shades on the bottom, which is what I did for my recent look. They're just very high shine, high impact shades. This one is more of a lavender to periwinkle shade, whereas this one has a little bit of a purpley base, but then the sparkles are like gold and green. So it's just really, really fun. Like these two are very out there when it comes to just how interesting the colors are. This one over here is a trio chrome shade kind of similar to the last palette, though this is not in her baked formula. It's a bit shinier as a result, so if you want sort of a higher impact shine factor for a trio chrome shade, this one is really nice. Whenever I use this one, I always top it with some of these though, just to give it some extra oomph. And then this shade over here is kind of like the one in Sublime, but just easier to use. And so I find this sort of flaky gold to be really nice for a variety of looks. For today's look, I actually use this in the inner corner on top of the Skin Show shade, just to add a little bit more shine. And I find that these shades in this palette as well are just super fun. This one in particular for a metallic shade actually has a lot more impact. It's almost more like one of her special shades. It has really high shine. And this one is lovely if you want something that is a bit more elegant and subdued. If you focus on these four shades, you'll get something more similar to Divine Rose 1. And so to me, that kind of gives some versatility with this palette. You can have that sort of sophisticated look here or you can have something much more playful and girly, especially if you incorporate this hot pink over here. This is also a really lovely blush. And I actually, for today's look, went in with a little bit of this shade just in the crease area, kind of at the end of the look, just to add a little pop of color. And so for me, whenever I use this palette, I just find it's really fun. Whenever I'm sort of in a rut with makeup and I want something to just cheer me up, this is the palette that I go for. And especially recently, I feel like natural makeup has been really in. The eyeshadows we've been seeing are just less interesting to me. And that's why I've been loving this palette in particular a lot, because I just look forward to using it. It's very different than what else we're getting on the market right now. And so if you like playful makeup, if you like special shades that are very sparkly, then this is the palette that I would most recommend. And for me at the moment, this is my number one Pat McGrath palette. So that's it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed this Pat McGrath rankings video and my updated impressions of these palettes. 
I would love to hear in the comments below what you guys think about Pat McGrath motherships. If you guys have a favorite, please share that as well. I'm always curious about the different opinions and that's probably also helpful for folks who are watching this palette because they want to see different rankings. Everyone has different opinions, so it's always great to hear from different perspectives. And if you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you all so much for joining me today and I'll catch you next time. Bye.